Welcome, you're listening to the Disney Twin Podcast, episode one. And a half. <laughs> I was going to say part two. <laughs> part two. <laughs> um, our first episode ran a little long, so we took a break, uh, so you weren't overwhelmed yes. with everything. And so. if you absolutely are so fascinated, we're glad you're sticking with us <laughs> for another half an hour of things we like about Disney. Yay. I I'm am Marianne. And I'm Arianne, and we're the Disney Twins. Uh, once again, uh, you can find all of our show notes at the DisneyTwins.wordpress.com, and on with the rest of our show. Oh, I so sorry. Um, okay, so yeah, favorite park for me is Epcot, um, and uh, my favorite ride. You know, when we first started talking about these questions, I would say, hands down, my all-time favorite ride. Speaking of Epcot, is Horizons. Oh yes, and uh, for several reasons. One. And for those of you that are, you know, younger than 30, um, Horizons is, uh, is where Mission Space is now. We should have a moment of silence for, for, for Horizons. For Horizons. It's, uh, not only that, I bought, there's a guy, and I want to say his name is Jeff Lang, and he has done, um, before the advent of YouTube, he made full POV DVDs of all of the old rides, like World of Motion. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. Uh, so I bought... The Horizon, the Horizon one. one. For my first Christmas with my boyfriend, who is now my husband, I bought the DVD. Dude, that was like his space, present. Was it the space, though? Um, you... He does all three, Oh, actually. he does all three. He does all three. So Horizons was a slow-moving dark ride. Um, and It uh, smelled like oranges. Yes. You just went in there and you were like... Orange. The cleaner that they used um, on the handrails and everything had that <laughs> orange smell. And um, there was never any line. Uh, but the end of the ride, uh, so the ride kind of took you through a futuristic, but a 70s version of futuristic society, um, either if you lived in space in the future, or out in the sea, or in the desert. And at the end of the ride, you got to choose between those three endings, and there was a little short, like, less than 60 second clip of you that, you know, the went through, was yes. The soundtrack was amazing. In fact... My ringer, my generic ringer, when people call me, like not my mom or my husband, is the Horizon soundtrack. I should call you, and we should hear it one day. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it, will, it will play for you. I'm, I, again, I'm a custom ringer nerd person. Sorry if that disappoints any listeners. Um, but I do have Horizons That's cool. uh, as my ringer. So my all-time favorite ride is Horizons. I would say my, um, just for nostalgic, I'm going to go with Space Mountain as yeah. my... I'm, I'm, if I don't do Space Mountain, I feel like my Disney is not completely complete. Yeah. Um, I, the Big Thunder Mountain for me. Because yeah. I think that was my first roller coaster with my dad. And I love, I, I think as a kid, we always ran back and forth. At like the last 20 minutes of the park, we would run from one to the other as a kid. Yeah. You know, and, and they couldn't be them. farther apart. Right. It was really exactly. decidedly inconvenient. Yes. My poor father. I, now I look back and I'm like, wow, what my parents did yeah. when I was a kid. But, oh, um, yeah. Big Thunder Mountain, that was, like, the one that I wanted to get. And I love it, especially during the Christmas party because everyone has, their like, their little osborne light Christmas necklaces on. So you see the trains going by at night, and you see these – it's, like, covered with with Christmas lights. And it's just <laughs> – Well, I will say this. the um, uh, our, our routine is such – every time we go to Magic Kingdom, the first thing we ride is the Tomorrowland – Transit Authority. Oh, the people mover. The people mover. And the, the TTC people mover. Um, and the reason is because before the days of Fast Pass and all of that, you rode the people mover because when it went inside Space Mountain, you could see you how could see long the line. line. That's right. Now, of course, it's dark and they've covered that, so you can't do that anymore. Not that you need to now with the um, My Disney Experience and all of that. But um, we we rode, we would because ride Because we were like, there. quickly, let's get off this thing quick. It's only like... 30 minutes. Right. Quickly, quickly. But that's how we, we'd have like our little Disney family meetings mm -hmm. on the Tomorrowland. And it's something that everybody can ride. And interesting fact, before Test Track was built, um, the Tomorrowland Transit People Mover was actually potentially the fastest ride at Disney World because it's on magnets. Yes. So it could reach the top. It had the highest top speed at one point. It no longer does because Test Track exists. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, a car can go faster. But yes. um uh, what's your so we were talking about rides yes what's your favorite place to eat since we're uh, food and wine junkies um, you know I, I'm, I'm a sucker for the hoop to do review I love it give me you some, are a sucker uh, I am a sucker because I'll pay the because the <laughs> hundred and Fifty million dollars it costs to go there <laughs> for some fried chicken and some strawberry short yes, strawberry shortcake short yeah and um, here's some 
unbearable jokes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I honestly, like, my um, first day in musical theater um, class in college. Don't tell me you had, like, an audition piece from Hoop Dee Doo. No, okay. no, baby, no, baby, it gets worse. <laughs> so <he's> like, <laughs> my teacher, Marcus, was like, so tell me the one show you would like to do and the one show you would not like to do. And I was like, I, I would love to do the Hoop Dee Doo Review at Disney World more than yeah. anything in the Everyone world. Everyone else said Les Mis. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, yeah. And I'm like, and then I would rather have my spleen removed with a straw than do Cats. Guess really? what show I've done? I have seen you in Cats. That's, That's exactly the funny right. Part. Yes, and you have a cat I... who also could be a character <laughs> in Cats because she's got like her own personality. She, yeah, she is definitely McCavity meets you know <laughs> the rum tum yes. I don't know skimble shanks. I don't know. <laughs> who did you play in Cats? For... It was Tantamil. Oh, um, I do recall. I did uh, see you in Cats. Oh. Yeah. And you've and still to this day, have you at least been up as part of the show in the Hoopty Doo review? No. I, then the most I've been in interactive was um, we were that circle table. We had enough of us to be at the circle table okay. that in the middle of the show, you remember all six cast members do a circle around the, I yeah. think it's right before the strawberry shortcake. Yeah. That you have we the show that, that memorized is, is yes. a little frightening. I think um, um, Clara. Next... Clara was the one I wanted to be, at that, the one in purple. Next time you go, I challenge you to bring a little sign. <laughs> You know, like people who, like fangirls in an audience, Yeah. you know. know. Can I please touch your hair, Mark (laughs) Ruffalo, or whatever it is? You know, it's the Comic-Con, and then they let him, so I would, I challenge you to say, please pick me, it's my birthday. Even if it's not, you can lie, you know, it's whatever. Every, it's your, I've never, yeah. Every day is your birthday at Disney. Because they pull cast members up. It's because you look, and maybe you look too, like you look like you're too much of a ringer. I I was like, oh, too excited to do it. My dad got picked (laughs) for everything. Oh my gosh. If it was an interactive thing at Holly, like at, at Hollywood Studios, he's done it. I did Superstar Television when did, I was a kid. My mother and I, because we are named Ginger and Marianne. Oh, you got picked as the uh, we, Gilligan's Island. When we got kid. pulled, when we were in line, I don't know how we started talking to a cast member, and I know that's why they pulled us because you know they, yeah. they're always picking people for different reasons. If you if you don't know about that, that was uh, where the um, American Idol is. Now is no longer. No longer there. <laughs> so now it's a dead space. But um, MGM is going to have a major overhaul in the next couple of years with the addition of Toy Story area and uh, Star, Star Wars. Wars. So uh, sad that we lose the Osborne spectacle of lights, but I hope that they'll do something I'm with that sure space. I'm sure something has got to be coming in. They can't leave that park open for the holidays. Yeah. Like they're they're going to bring some. And knowing Disney, they're going to come in and they're going to bring Of course. But there's that whole area when you walk towards the Star Wars ride at um, Disney World. So Superstars Television was the first little sort of retro-looking yeah. theater. And then the second one was the, sound. the, the Monster Sound Show, which uh, starring Drew, Drew Carey. Carey. Um, but before that, I believe it was Martin Short and Chevy yes. Chase. Yes, it was. To date me. Um, yeah, and they would pull people. I don't know if they ever pulled your dad to do yep, the horses. Yes, yes. My you, grandfather I mean, was always pulled. He was he did the Lederhosen thing at the Oktoberfest oh, at Germany. His My dad's favorite thing to do was the Indiana Jones. Oh, that's... Sounds spectacular. Oh, one. but sometimes they pull, like, cast members, like they're ringers. Cause yeah, no, no. I would imagine they the They always picked my dad's shirt oh. because he would wear the most... Like a pick me shirt from like no Price no. is Right or something. No, no, it was like the most obscene Hawaiian, like tropical. <laughs> <laughs> like he he actually would go shopping for shirts just to like be picked out. It was oh, it was kind that's of strategic. Ridiculous. Well, yes. it works. It works though. Um, my favorite place to we talk, we started talking about food. Yes. Um, you said hoop de doo. Mm-hmm. I'd say my favorite place to eat we um restaurant wise is Garden Grill Garden at the Grill. end of our trip. Mm-hmm. We always make reservations for Garden Grill. It's Which character is, dining. Yeah, it's Chippendale now, Chippen, right? Yep, Chippendale's Harvest Lunch or something like that. And is before it, that, it was you would be very easy to get a, a table at that place. And yep. now, now that they've added characters, not so much. No, that's true. But it's also Mickey and Pluto. Now it's Farmer Mickey, so um, it's definitely there. Um, it's slightly healthy. So that's kind of, healthy. <laughs> yeah, the land always makes you feel healthier because you well, feel like you're eating about, the food out of the ride. Well, they talk about <laughs> that they're about organic vegetables and all that, oh, okay. and it's uh, it's family style, um, have sort of a set menu. So kind of like the Hoop to Do review. Yep. So character dining, family style. Um, it's always our last meal because I feel it's like a little bit of a cleanse before we go back <laughs> to the real world. Um, but my favorite thing to eat, my must eat thing. Speaking of healthy stuff, or rather unhealthy stuff, is the cream cheese filled sweet pretzel at the lunching pad at Tomorrowland. 
Awesome. Do you have a favorite? I, I, Dole Whips are our most recent thing, and I've also become addicted at the confectionery place as you leave ma- um, mm-hmm. the Magic Kingdom on yeah. Main Street. Uh, they have the popcorn, and I, I got addicted to the Halloween, I mean, the Haunted Mansion popcorn, which I guess is now a seasonal item, because I went the other day, and they did not have it, so I got the uh, confetti, I think the that's confetti. what it says, it's confetti popcorn, which my husband says tastes like Fruit Loops, and we had you try it. it, it and it's it definitely <laughs> Fruit Loops. Whatever so. they do to make Fruit Loops, like Cheerios, but Fruit Loops, it's that. They've done that to popcorn. Yeah, so but my nights of being home by myself while my husband's still working and the kids are asleep, I sit in front of the Netflix, watch TV with a Toblerone, a Cherry Coke, and my <laughs> Walt Disney World popcorn. <laughs> oh, it is a sad world we live in. Um, well, you can check out those pictures on Instagram. <laughs> What's your favorite time of year to go? Because we go so, oh. I mean, we're very fortunate living in Miami yes. that we're three hours away. And now they're building a train, so we'll be less than that. <gasps> Shut up. Are you, you serious? You didn't saw the no. news. Yes. They there's finally gonna approved be, it? Yes. It was supposed to be a bullet train. It's just going to be a train train, but it'll be a, a high-speed kind of train between Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Orlando. So that really does for our whole packing episode. <laughs> yeah. Do, oh, I, I still take the whole house. I mean... <laughs> Um, I use the fact that I have a baby (laughs) who's now almost three, so she's not really a baby anymore. So I don't have to take every child item I own. And my husband, um, has type one diabetes, so, but that does not mean I need to take every food item we have just a little bit in case we have a sugar low, but I pack as if the apocalypse is coming. (laughs) And if it hits while we're on the turnpike, I'm set. So other than the fact that I have, I have no cardio. So when the zombies come, I'm the first one down. Um, but my, my favorite time of year though, uh, is Christmas. Yes. There's nothing like those Christmas decorations. Yeah, no, it's, it's really nice. I mean, I was thinking about the fall and how they decorate for Halloween and stuff. And even when they do it in early August. Yes. Um, it's, it's gorgeous. Um, but I, I definitely agree. I think the Christmas time is just really nice. I was really kind of bummed. Um, even though we were there and the Osborne lights were up. Um, not much else was decorated as far as the parks go, except mm-hmm. for the Magic Kingdom, because we were there for the first night of the Mickey's Christmas party. Oh, there um, you go. But I really enjoyed that. Yeah, it's... walking out, late night, Magic Kingdom. And uh, one thing I've never done, but it's definitely on my bucket list, is the Kiss Goodnight. Which, so after the fireworks, um, they do this nightly at Magic Kingdom. After the fireworks show is over, everybody rushes to leave because, you know, the park is closed. Um, but they, they won't physically remove you yet. Um, and you don't have to stand in the two-hour monorail line. If you shop around a little bit and sit and let like a half an hour go by, about a half an hour after fireworks, they do what's called the Kiss Goodnight. And they do a little projection show on the castle and turn the castle off. And then they will... Kick you out. Kick you out. Like physically remove you. Is that what that is? That's called I've never, the kiss goodnight. I never, yep. you know. And I haven't seen it with my own eyes. I've only read about it. Fully, it could be a lore. I fully admit that there are things that, even as much as we've gone and how much we've experienced things, I don't think, uh, there are things that I'm still new to. Have you, you know? done a rope drop? I <laughs> I did rope drops with my family back in the day. Mm-hmm. Before, before they were called, it yeah. was called a rope drop. Um, now just that geeks that were there early. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Come on, the park's open in two hours. We gotta be there. <laughs> and we're there till one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And then, I mean, like, we're literally the ones that they're like, come on, please, sweeping us out the door. Um, and then, but after vacationing with my husband, I realized I, I kind of like sleeping in until yeah. 10 o'clock. And two not, small children will do yeah, that too. Yeah, oh, yeah, well, that too. So, yeah. rope drop, I, ha- I have to say, I was there again, I don't remember it, but it was there opening day of Epcot, and supposedly we were there for the whole opening celebration that was outside and we walked in but the rope drop at magic kingdom is uh, a little show with the train they bring characters out it's definitely something worth seeing um and getting up early for um all right so what's our next uh these are kind of combo questions so the three must do things and one magical thing like your most magical thing, which I kind of know what yours is already, but what are the three things that you have to um, do or have or your vacation is not <laughs> complete? So this really tells you the geekiness that we are in our family. Uh, we have to do Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. We have to go get our cards. <laughs> <laughs> that is, 
I, I, every time we pass one of those little stands, I'm like, who does these? Now it's I know. It. It's us. It's, it's you guys. Us, it's us. It's us. <laughs> <laughs> we walk around. We got our, you know, like we're, <laughs> we're at home. Ames has found the videos on YouTube. She's like practices in the house. You know, it's, it's, yeah, we're the, we're the, we're that geeky family. Um, but so we do more Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. I think my ride that I have to do is Big Thunder Mountain. And then, um, oh, third thing. I don't know. Is there a, uh, well, you said your popcorn, your food items. Yeah, I guess really. my food items. Yeah, my popcorn, my Dole Whip and my, my, uh, my popcorn. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those are my, my must do three things. It's kind of sad. <laughs> no, I mean, I'll have, uh, I can categorize my must do. So my first is, uh, the Rice Krispie Treats, um, there's whatever uh, theme season that's out. You know, summertime, they look like flip-flops. Right. Um, I always get one. Sometimes, if we're at Disney, downtown Disney now, called Disney Springs, we go to Goofy's Candy Shop, and they ah. make them. They custom there for Ooh. you. Um, funny candy shop story is uh, one of the first times we walked in there. So my husband uh, my, uh, and his brother were all kind of amazed at the wall to floor to ceiling candy everywhere <laughs> and this mom walks in with i say maybe a three or four year old girl she was talking pretty well so we'll, we'll go with four um and it'll make sense in a second so she's looking eyes as big as dinner plates at all this candy <laughs> and she starts to kind of reach out to <gasps> grab for candy and the mom keeps pulling her back and finally bends down and gets right in her face and says you cannot have any candy and the little girl looks right at her and says then why did you bring me in here? Oh. And I'm like, get this child some candy. <laughs> because any four-year-old, if you take a child into right. a candy why store, you, you take, must buy them candy. Why That's did like, you take them in there? Right. If you're not going to buy them candy, don't, I mean, talk about candy we're, kids. We're, I, I think we definitely need to also have a conversation about the crazy things that we have seen at Disney as far oh, as yeah. behavior. And, and my, my father-in-law is a, a minister, so he every time he goes, he gets at least a dozen sermon starters uh, from for the for year. The, for, he, like, stocks up. Uh, when we go at Christmas time, he stocks up for the year. And that candy, you know, why'd you bring me in here, yeah. was definitely a sermon kickoff. I don't remember That's, the point of the sermon, which is kind of sad, but I remember that the opening part was, why'd you bring me in here? Um, uh, yeah, so um, I have to get a Rice Krispie treat. Um, I'm also one of those people, every time we drive in across the Osceola, uh, I have to take my picture. Why well, not my picture? But I take a picture from the passenger seat because I'm not driving. So wait, wait, um, are you one of those people that that's why they have signs there now saying no stopping? Probably. I mean, they don't <laughs> list me specifically. <laughs> But we Especially didn't. you, Marianne. <laughs> Stopping here for you. We may have slowed down um, uh, or gotten out. And the funny part is that we are, we are there four times a year. Um, we, At least. We, right. And we started that back when the Four Seasons Salute Pass existed back in the early oh, 80s. wow. And those were the off seasons that Florida residents could go for less than yes. 100 bucks for your yes. Four Seasons Salute Which Pass. Which is not that way anymore. No. No. <laughs> No, 100 bucks gets you nothing at Disney. A uh, Rice Krispie Treat, maybe, and a Dole Whip. Um, but we, uh, so every time we go, we stop. If you look back through my phone, it's just a whole bunch of pictures. Of, and I would text or put it on Facebook. Hi, I'm here again. Um, and then uh, I would say my one ride, which is not really a ride, but it is in that it's a vehicle that takes you places, is the monorail. Oh, yeah. Even if I don't need to, like if I'm going from MGM to Animal Kingdom or a yeah, monorail, yeah, yeah, yeah. I find get, a way. You get to Epcot. You ride it ride around the, to the transportation ticket That's the best. The best trip is from Transportation Ticket Center to Epcot because you get the little Epcot tour. Yes. Right, Madigan? Yes. Madigan agrees yes. with me. No, actually, she hasn't been on a monorail. Oh, dear. This poor thing. No, wait, no. She was, yeah. She's only three months old. She's hardly deprived. Um, <laughs> but um, the fact that she's even been to Disney is like... Three times already. I was going to say, when did you first take her? She was not even two weeks old. You were those people. I was that person. That was, woman is pat, taking a newborn I, in the could, stroller, covered, you know, yeah, so yeah, they don't yeah. get coughed No, on. no, no. She was in the Bjorn. She was okay. on me, you know. Um, the closest person she came in contact with was Ariel and... Who's um, hopefully had her shots. Yes. Yeah, being from under the sea. <laughs> you would hope that all Disney employees, with all the people that they have to meet, would have their <laughs> shots. How many kids sit on their lap? I would get my shots too. Yeah. No offense, kids. Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't know why I'm always sick. Um, it's because I'm around five year olds for a living. Um, what's your and your, yours is better, gonna be better than mine. So um, I, I I'll, I'll go with mine first. I would say my best Disney, my overall most magical experience. Um, walking around Disneyland Paris when the park was mostly empty was pretty cool. Um, you know, I've, I've been to grad night. Going at night is always really special, too. Um, I've had the fortune to take my daughter to see things, and now that she's almost three and kind of coming into really, you know, knowing the park really well, um, it's, it's interesting to see her reaction to all this magic for the first time. But my first... New Year's Eve at the top of the world when Bay Lake Tower opened. Nice. They do the fireworks at the castle, and then as they count down to midnight, there are ten, I believe it's ten, could be eight, uh, fireworks stations around Seven Seas Lagoon. And when the fireworks launch, they um, they have shapes. You know how in the regular Wishes show there's a star and the magic mirror and the heart and all that? Yes. Um, they do the numbers and they count down from oh, 10. Oh, cool. It's awesome. So, so okay, wait. So they named the top of the, the Bay Lake Tower Top of the World? Yeah, it's called Top of the World. Like the restaurant that yes. they had? Oh, yes, that's, which is confusing. Yeah, because I mean... Because now the restaurant's the California Grill. Yes. Yeah. So they call it Top of the World and, um, uh, there's, it's for DVC, we have to be a guest of DVC or know somebody who's staying there to, to go up to it but it's got beautiful views they pump the music over um it's lovely and you have a really good shot of Tinkerbell because she's oh, very, very clear cool. Tinkerbell who's usually a man I did not know that I did I was standing there watching wishes one night um next to a you know, my husband was there with me and next to a random stranger we just you know Disney people we all get to talking and we happen to be right under where she flies and um, I don't know how we were talking about what, where we were from and what we do. And uh, uh, the lady said, well, my husband catches her. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The conversation came up that the lady next to me, who is equally a Disney trivia nut, said, did you know that that's the only job that Disney offers that they don't offer life insurance? I said, really? I said, how did you come to know this interesting tidbit? She said, well, my husband catches her. He's one of the crew members that are on top of the um, Tomorrowland Terrace that catch her and unharness her. And it's, it's almost always a man because um, they, uh, Tinkerbell has to be heavy enough to go down the zip at that oh. speed. And a woman, you know, t a average woman is a little too light, especially if it's a little bit windy. They don't fly, but in certain circumstances, so because it's, it's a man. Oh, wow. So he's like a 200-pound guy. Wow, well, that's Which you can't really see. I mean, it's, it's in the dark, far away. Right. You know, it, it's a, it's a one-piece. It's not a leotard because it's got rigging and all that. Right. Um, but sorry to spoil the magic for you guys, but Tink Tink Tinkerbell has a secret. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and I, to me, honestly, um, I'm really kind of upset that the stepsisters in the parade are not men as they used to be in the 80s. See, yeah, and Mickey's almost always a girl too, yes, because she's got to be small, small enough. Yeah. yeah, sorry to ruin the Disney magic yeah. for you. So we'll end with your best story. Okay. Your, what's your best well, Disney? Well, I mean, story? we got married there. That's amazing and enough. You know, we had our reception and illuminations in Italy. It was probably the first, uh, from what I heard from fairy tale weddings, was it was the first sit down reception that they've ever had at Illumination. So oh, we wow. kind of set the ground for that. Because of that. So if you have any complaints about fairy tale weddings, um, we'll post Ariel's yeah, yeah, yeah. address <laughs> for you. To... <laughs> what do you mean they only offer steak, chicken, or fish? <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> I'm ready to start. So um, my favorite is um, kind of going and running Walt Disney World Half Marathon, and it starts at Epcot and goes down World Drive to the Magic Kingdom. And, of course, you come up to the the gates of the Magic Kingdom where you yeah, think the yeah, parking. The actual parking gate. Yes, yes, the parking yeah. gate. And so that to me, I was like, wow, you know, you drive through it so many times and everything, but... I really must do the run Disney thing. It is very cool. So yeah. I actually stopped and like went off to the side and I took my picture and I was like, eh. see, not, uh, it's all right to stop and take your picture from time to time. Yes, but I, I pulled over on the other side of the cones, so... Oh. <laughs> you didn't stop your car in the mid middle no, of the Osceola No, and there. I didn't stop in the middle of the way like some... Uh, some runners do, like they saw Anna and Elsa during the 10K last year, and they were like, just stop middle, and I'd like... So, saying, let it go, almost, and you punched him in the face. No, I, I was like, move off to the side, please. <laughs> <laughs> I almost crashed into several women. So, um, so yeah. 
So yeah, that's it. Ah, so now you know all you need to know about us for today. Uh, um, and a little bit too much, I probably, think. Probably, probably. Um, but we hope you've enjoyed listening to our podcast, yes. our inaugural podcast. Um, we're going to come up with some uh, helpful tips, and we might even do some videos. Um, we talked about doing a packing one. Yes, um, which will be very exciting. Yes, um, because I drive a giant... Acadia that runs on Baby Seal, and I run a, uh, a Mini Cooper Clubman, which is a, oh. no, a Countryman. Countryman. Oh, that's at the big one. <laughs> and this is uh, this is our other little yes. special guest <laughs> star. <laughs> maybe maybe we'll pass this on to the girls yes, later yes, later yes. in life. Hey, back in the day with mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the podcast of the future. Um, just so you know, our goal is not to have a podcast this long, but uh, so but thank you for sticking with us for the yep. for the hour or so that we were here talking. And it's just like standing in line at Toy Story Mania. Yes, exactly. Yes, there you go. This is something that you can do the next time you're in line. You can listen to our podcast. Oh yes, and and wave at us as we fast pass right yes. by you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that, that's kind of snarky. No. <laughs> Again, our show notes can be found at thisismetwins.wordpress.com. Oh, it's, it's a zoo in here. Here comes, <laughs> Jumanji. Here comes the cats. And the horses. Oh. Uh, hi, my name is Ariane. And, and I'm Marianne. And thanks for joining us for We're the Disney, Disney Twins. twins. <laughs> Bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Disney Twin Podcast. All show notes and information are available at our blog, thedisneytwins.wordpress.com. Thanks for listening and be sure to join us next week for our next episode.